If you're looking to spice up your slideshow with a presentation that's guaranteed to catch people's eyes, then look no further as M Presentation for DaVinci Resolve has arrived. So once you've installed M Presentation from the installer, you want to head over to the effects tab to search M Presentation. Here you'll find 10 different transitions, 69 different titles, and eight different effects. However, I'm going to stay on the toolbox tab. That way I can see every element of this pack. So all the assets in this pack work on a drag and drop basis. You either drag the title onto the timeline or when it comes to the effects or transitions, you'll drag these directly onto the clips. So we'll kick things off with some of these placeholders. Now these are honestly some of my favorite effects that Motion VFX creates. It increases the quality and look of your videos with such ease. All you need to do is drag the effect onto your clip and then you can begin customizing. So the first thing you want to do after applying this effect, and this actually goes for every effect you use with Motion VFX, is tick this 4K quality box. This ensures that everything is properly scaled and at the best quality. Now we'll begin customizing this to our liking, and the first section is the content controls. And this is a master control which allows you to control the entire effect. So that's the position, the scale, and the rotation. Next, we have the drop zone controls. Now this is where we can select whether or not we want the placeholder to use the clip that we've attached it to or not. Most likely you do want to have this checked so you can actually see the clip, but the option is here to uncheck this box so you can just use the title element of this placeholder. But also in this tab is where you can control how the footage interacts with the placeholder. So without interfering with the entire effect, you can actually customize the drop zone controls. So I can move around this box, I can make it bigger, or if we go to the inner position, this controls how the footage will move inside the drop zone. So if I want to slide this a little bit to the left, a little bit higher, if I want to make it bigger, or even the rotation. So you have all of these options to modify the drop zone itself without messing with the actual placeholder. So I think I'll set and have my drop zone look like this. Then we'll move into the title tabs. And in this placeholder, you just have the two. However, in some other placeholders, there may be some more, but don't be alarmed as they all work in the exact same way. You can enter in the text you want, change the fonts, the colors, the size, and the position, which I think I might do to making this a little bit further out and maybe overlapping a little bit. And the same for the subtitle. I'll slide that over to the right and again, have that overlapping effect. And then I'll just increase the size. And the last tab in these effects is the drop shadow. And this is just to control the drop shadow behind the effect to make it stand up more. It's not really something you need for the placeholders, but when we get more into the titles, that's when their use really comes into play. Now, all the other placeholders work in the exact same way as this one, barring the last two. If I delete this placeholder effect from this clip so you can see what I mean, if I now hover over these placeholders, you'll notice they have multiple drop zones, but right now it's just showing duplicates. Now, these placeholders aren't made for duplicates, but in fact, multiple clips. Now, when you hover over these placeholders, you can see how many sources are needed, but sometimes it's a little harder to tell. So how you'd actually find out how many sources that you'd need is by dragging this placeholder onto your clip, going into the inspector tab, and that's where you'll see the relevant information. So this says built for a fusion clip with eight sources, and then dragging the last placeholder, this says built for a fusion clip of three sources. So now that we understand how many sources are needed, I'll go ahead and delete this effect and start building the fusion clip. So you'll first want to gather the amount of sources are needed. So in this case, I need three. So then you'll want to stack them on top of each other, ideally making them all the same length. Don't stress too much about the ordering of these clips because that can easily be changed later. But when it comes to placeholders, the clips show up in order of the layer numbers. So in this case, this bottom clip on the video layer one will be first in the placeholder. So we'll just highlight them all, right click and hit new fusion clip. Now we have the one layer which encompasses all three of these clips. From there, we will just drag on this effect. And now you can see we have all three clips inside this one placeholder. And you're of course able to customize this in the inspector tab the same way. And if you get to this point and you aren't happy with the audio clips are in, all you need to do is right click the layer, open in timeline, and then just swap around the order. Moving on to the next section, which is titled add-ons, but this all comes under the title section. And this is where you'll begin to drag and drop the effects directly onto the timeline, opposed to the clip itself. And everything I'm showing you now is pretty standard across all the titles, apart from a few exceptions. So if I drag on this first title, you can see it's a star animating in and animating back out. So again, the first thing you want to do when it comes to these effects is going ahead and ticking that 4K quality checkbox. Then at the top of all of these titles, you'll see two more boxes, an in and an out. Now this is just going to control whether or not you want the title to animate when the layer starts and ends. But what is really clever about the motion VFX titles is that the animation automatically adjusts the length of time of the layer. 
So if you make it really long, the title will continue to work perfectly to that time span. However, if you make it a bit too short, the title won't quite animate out due to the amount of time the animation takes. So the inspector tab for this title, we again have the content controls, which I won't get into because they work the exact same way as before. Then we have the star controls. Now this will vary depending on the title you're using because not every title is a star, but in this case, we do have the star where you can turn it on or off, which I guess would be pointless turning it off, but you have the option. You can move it around to where you want it to be. You can also adjust the option of whether you want it to be a fill or an outline. So in this case, I'll keep it as fill. We can change the size. We can modify the color to be any color you want. And we have the thickness. Now this is only really relevant if you do have the outline so you can choose how thick you want it to be. So in this add-on section, the controls are gonna be quite simple. But when you go into the infographic section, you'll see a different story. Now don't panic, I haven't forgotten about this background section. I will come back to that as they operate ever so slightly differently. But as you can see, there are a lot more tabs going on compared to the add-ons. So again, the first thing we'll do is take this 4K quality box. We'll skip right over the content controls because again, it works in the exact same way. Text controls. Now this will be for your titles on the left and a quick way for you to identify what text is you're modifying. You can of course look at the actual text here and find it, or you can just toggle off the title on and off and quickly see which title is being affected. These text controls for all these different tabs will work in the exact same way as before, where you have your text box, your font, your colors, your size, etc. And then coming out of that text control, I'll actually skip over the graphics control for now and go straight into entries because this is where you can actually modify how many entries are in your graph. And for me, it makes more sense to modify this first before you start customizing all the graphics. So the entries right now are currently set to the max at 10, but I'm gonna drop this all the way down to five. And just like that, you've gone from 10 to five entries without having to adjust them all individually. So next we'll go into the different entries and this is where you can modify the labels, you can modify the values, you know, how high you want them. And this is how it works for all of the different entries. So I'll just leave that where it is for now. And now I'll head back into the graphics control. And now this is where you'll start to understand why I went to the entries control first. So now that we've only got five entries, I'm gonna go ahead and spread these entries out to use a bit more of the space. And then I'm gonna move these entries right into the center of that gap. And now do you understand why I've done the entries first? Because if I was to do this the other way around where I start messing up the spread and the, the position, and then I remove the entries, I'm gonna have to go back and change it anyway. So my personal recommendation would be to get the information right before you start adjusting the look. And then from here, you can change everything you want. You know, Maybe it's the, the height of the bars, the thickness of them, and then you have the background color. But be aware when you do change this, it may not look like the full color and that's because the opacity is at 50%. And this is obviously something else you can then adjust to your style and you have the main bar color. So let's make this a really punchy orange. Now, how you can take this to the next level would be to layer it up. So all of these infographics actually have transparent backgrounds. So there's nothing stopping you from putting these on top of footage or better yet, using some of these backgrounds. Now, when using these backgrounds, they all work slightly differently in terms of the options you have to control. However, the principle to control them is all the same. So the first one you're seeing has this abstract background with these curved lines. So this is where you can change the color of the lines. So you can, again, just drag around the wheel to select the color you want. You can change the thickness. And this is what I've done here is actually change the background color. So to ensure that the infographic that I have on top is visible, I've made it darker. However, it's dark, it's around here, but you just can't really see the graphics as much. So again, you can just change this around to look exactly how you want it to. Alternatively, if I was to make this back to stock, I could just decrease the opacity, which would then show the layer under it. The last aspect of this title is the grain control and you can toggle on and off this grain. You can control how strong the grain is and you can animate this grain. Beware, if you do animate this grain, it will become more taxing on your device. And deleting that, you have like background seven, which includes some text options, background eight, which includes a window for you to have footage behind. And my personal favorite, which is background nine, just because it has a few built-in add-ons which you can customize the look of or just turn off. The important thing to remember is again, to tick that 4K quality box. Now the rest of the titles are gonna work in a very similar way to this, but the real power of the pack is by being able to stack multiple elements together at the same time. So if I delete this bar chart, I'll then drop some footage on a layer above the background. That way I can then put a placeholder on top. Just check that quality box. Now moving back into the titles, I'll grab 
M presentation title six, place that on top. We'll just use the content controls to adjust the position. Put that there on the left, maybe a little bit higher. And then we do have a section that I don't necessarily want in this sequence, which is this section here, the from vision to interface, premium version, and this little icon. So for that, I'll go down. I can just toggle this on and off to know which I'm interfering with. So I'll just toggle that off. The description, toggle that off. And the icon controls, toggle that off. And that to me looks pretty good already. I've barely done anything. Just to finish this off, I might add just one more add-on just to have something else going on in the bottom right corner to match all of the others. So I'll grab this star, put it on top, 4K quality, adjust the position, and there we have it. Bear in mind, the more of these effects you do stack on top of each other, the more taxing this will be for your device. Something new to these Motion VFX packs is this title section. And these are small backgrounds you can put in to organize your content. They are a little tricky to get your head around at first, but let me break it down for you. So I'll drag this first tile onto the timeline and you can see this blurred box appears. So if I go into the inspector tab and straight to the tile grid controls, you can see we have four different sliders and a few animation options. But what is clever about these tiles is that they're sized perfectly to use multiple. So you can see the options are grid rows and columns because this current tile size would fit two different rows. So if I duplicate this tile, now I'll move this up one. You can see they stack above each other perfectly. The X and Y position sliders will just control where that tile sits. However, the power of using these titles really comes through when you're using multiple of them. Because of this grid feature, it's really easy to get a clean, organized look. And to finish this overview, I want to touch on the transitions. This is probably the easiest section to understand as it really is just a drag and drop between the clips. You can adjust the length of time you want each transition to last by just dragging the box or in the inspector tab at the top. And then you can also customize the little extras each transition has, whether that's the colors, the transition directions, or the text involved. The main thing you want to ensure when using them, and I promise this will be the last time you hear me say it, is tick that 4K quality box. I hope this overview has been helpful and you're now ready to use this toolkit to make a presentation that doesn't put people to sleep. And if you have any questions at all, please comment them down below or head to our Motion VFX website. And as a final reminder, don't forget to check that 4K quality checkbox. See you in the next one.